This is Her Confidence Her Way podcast, episode 36. Are you feeling not confident? Are you telling yourself, no, you're not good enough? You know you can do more, and you know you're better than who you are right now. Well, it's not time for you to give up on who you are. Welcome to Her Confidence Her Way podcast. I am Emiko Rasmussen, a confidence building coach and a host of this podcast. Each week, I will bring you a guest or a lesson that will help you to break through your self limiting beliefs, fears, and barriers so that you can start building your own confidence and do what you really want to do without worrying about someone else's opinion and start living a meaningful life. We all have a gift of talent that no one can copy. And we're here to let our talent shine. So don't limit yourself. Are you ready to begin your journey to your confidence breakthrough? Let's go. Today's episode is brought to you by Audible.com. I love learning and I love reading about self help, female leadership, and any professional development books. But I'm a mom of two, and I'm also a full time working mom. And I got no time to sit down and enjoy some tea and read in a quiet room. Lucky me, I found Audible and I'm loving it. And I have been a user for over a year now. And I just cannot live without it now. You can listen to your favorite book during your commute, while you're cooking, cleaning, or folding your laundry at home. Or even while you're working out. For you, yes, you, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30 day trial to get you the opportunity to check out their service. Get a free Audible download and 30 day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the real global voice, or you can go to my website and click on the Audible 30 days trial. I love free stuff and you should definitely try it. Hi, ladies. How are you doing? Welcome and thank you so much for listening to Her Confidence Her Way podcast. I am your host, Emiko Rasmussen. First, I would like to thank all the listeners who are taking the time to listen to this episode. Today, I want to talk about this very important topic, which is self care. When you're hopping on an airplane, and the first thing that the flight attendants demonstrate for you is the safety demonstrations, right? And then when they're talking about the oxygen masks, they ask you to put yours first and then put your kids' oxygen mask next, meaning you have to take care of yourself first, otherwise, you can't help other people. This analogy is so important for not just for parents, but also everyone, especially us Japanese women. We were told to put others first and make everybody happy and meet someone else's expectation. This is really hard. I myself is a such a not necessarily a good example or a bad example. I'm still working on this self care and self love. But I totally know if I don't sleep well or if I'm not taking care of myself well, I can tell that I, I have a short temper and I tend to, I shouldn't really say this in public, but I do yell <laughs> towards my kids and I know I'm working on it. I, I'm not a perfect mom and I know my kids are not looking for a perfect mom. I know, I know that, but it's, it's very important for me to really work on my emotion and controlling my emotion. And because I do believe for positive parenting, and I really would like to <laughs> not to yell towards my kids. So today I have invited an expert who gave me a great lesson about health and beauty. And we also talked about a lot of self care and self love. Let me introduce this week's health expert, Catherine Gronauer. She is a certified health coach and she is a great wealth of knowledge about health and food energetics. 
She is also a creator of Girl on Bliss. Here's my conversation with Catherine. Enjoy. Hi, Catherine. How are you doing? And thank you, thank you so much for coming to Her Confidence Her Way podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Amiko. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, so today I have Catherine Gronauer, and she's a founder of Girl on Bliss. I, I love that name. <laughs> and she's a certified health coach and a writer who contributes to Huffington Post, Mind Body Green, Elite Daily, Elephant Journal, and Thrive Global. She's currently living in Japan and she's help, she helps women to be able to feel comfortable in their body, confident in their communication, clear on what, the, what their value is, and capable of being healthy and enjoying their pleasure of life. So this is just a little bit of Catherine, so why don't you just tell us more about who you are and what you do? Okay, sure, no worries. Um, oh my goodness, where should I start? Should I tell you about how I came to Japan or should I just tell you about uh, what I do now? Um, yeah, I mean, I like to go <laughs> here, so like anywhere. <laughs> okay. okay, sure. So um, I moved to Tokyo about seven and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and I came for university, so I went to Jochi Daigaku, okay. so it's a few university, and um, I went there for the full four years, so I, I graduated from there, I didn't do just a study abroad program, I went there for the full four years, and I, I worked a little bit, um, and then I decided to start my own business as a health coach, um, but I think the thing that really fueled me to be a health coach is when I came to Japan, I wound up losing 40 pounds. Mm which is almost 20 kilos. And I remember I was struggling so much with my weight in the US and there's just so much health information in the US, but, and I was doing everything, or at least I thought I was doing everything right. And I was trying all the fat diets, I was trying Weight Watchers, I was trying calorie counting, I was trying low carb, and I just could not get the weight down and it was driving me crazy. And I was also doing a lot of really um, high intensity training. so. At, back at that time, you didn't really hear of things like CrossFit, but it was kind of like mm -hmm. that where I would go to the gym and I would do really high intensity training. And uh, I really felt like I had to put in more effort to reach my goal. Yeah. And uh, it was very frustrating. So when I came to Japan, though, um, I started eating Japanese teishoku, started having, you know, rice and miso soup and, and all these different things. And I was learning a lot about uh, Japanese, not just Japanese food, but I want I was learning about macrobiotics. And the 40 pounds just really fell off of my body. Like, I, without even really focusing on weight loss, I was able to create a balanced body. And I felt like really confused by that because there's so many slim women in Japan, you know, to me, mm -hmm. especially coming from the United States, when you come to Japan, it's like everybody's very tiny. Uh -huh. And I just remember seeing them eating udon and soba and rice. And I just kept of thinking course. to myself, like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, how are they eating all this and staying so slim? Like, these are all the things I was told I shouldn't eat if I should, if I want to want to be healthy. But I knew that they were able to eat a variety of foods and be fine and I wasn't and I wanted that too so I wound up studying a little bit more about that so my main mission with my business now is to educate um, well English at the moment just English speakers so it could be in Japan or outside of Japan on uh, macrobiotics and food energetics so the things that I had learned and picked up here about health and body care I want to spread to other parts <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. I feel like I should just go back to Japan for a little bit so that I can lose like, what, 20 kilo or 40 pounds? I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, and I actually did see your picture. Uh, I went to your website and um, in the about section, you did post your previous picture and in the current picture. And I mean, you weren't that big in the other picture, but I can tell with the, the other picture I can see you have more confidence in that picture. Like I can just totally tell. So that's amazing. And now you're telling uh, other women. Are you um, focusing on just a woman or anyone in general? Right now, I'm just focusing on women. Okay. So I really, yeah, I really wanted this to be specifically for women. Yeah. But I do meet guys sometimes who are really curious about this food energetics concept. So sometimes okay. I think, oh, maybe I should branch out. But right now, it's just for women. Okay. Wow. So thank you so much for sharing. So. You, as you have mentioned, that you are you're born in the U.S., but then you have yeah. moved to Japan um, back in t was it ten years ago? You said uh, seven years ago. Oh, seven years ago. I'm sorry. Yeah. So seven years ago, and so can you share your story of like how you came to Japan and um, like what is the the life about? 
in Japan right now? Right. Like, what do you love about, you know, the life in Japan? Like, and, yeah. Okay, well, um, back when, so I'm originally from Florida, and I lived in Florida for about 16 years, but then I decided I wanted to go to boarding school. So I wound up uh, going to a high school in Connecticut. And I was honestly really miserable. <laughs> I just, mm -hmm. I didn't like the environment. I didn't like being out in the middle of nowhere. And I felt like if I was going to go to a university, I really wanted to be in a city. And mm -hmm. I also felt like the whole reason I wanted to go to boarding school is because I wanted to explore. You know, I'm sure everybody listening has that same feeling where you just, you just <laughs> want to see what else is out there. And I couldn't do a study abroad program from high school. So I figured, mm -hmm. hey, why not just jump the gun and go to boarding school? This seems like it was a good in between where I could yeah. get that experience away from home, meet other people, even if it wasn't to another country. But um, I wound up finding out that I just really, really did not like being in an institution in the middle of nowhere. And um, it came time to do the college tour. So we were trying to find out what type of university I could go to. And I was only thinking of going to universities in the U.S. But uh, since we were in Connecticut, we wound up taking a tour of Yale University. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I said to my parents, I was like, I cannot look at another Gothic building <laughs> in this gray area. I just can't take it. And my parents are like, are you sure? Because it's, you know, this is Yale. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can get a good education get here. Get like, perspective. Really care. Yeah, do you really care about the building? Like, you know, uh -huh. and I was like, oh. and so then my, my mother, so my mom is Japanese, and I remember we were in the car uh, driving back to my high school, and she said, well, you know, if you're so curious about traveling abroad and doing study abroad, um, at Jolji, they have a four-year international program. So you can actually just go there, even though you don't speak Japanese, you can just go there for the full four years instead of just doing a study abroad. And I was like, oh, that sounds great. And so I just <laughs> I applied and I just didn't think about it. It was wow. just sound, sounded like some interesting thing to do. And I applied. And uh, when I got the uh, acceptance letter, I was like, oh, my gosh, I think I have to go to Japan now. Like, I didn't want to <laughs> pass up this this opportunity. And I remember, you know, in most Japanese who I meet when they're writing in English, it's kind of confusing sometimes. And the acceptance letter I got, it said, list of successful applicants is what it said. Mm -hmm. And successful applicant, it, it, to me, it sounds like they received my my application. It doesn't yeah. sound to me like I was accepted to the school. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of confused on the wording, but then I was able to confirm it with the school that I was accepted there. So it was really right. exciting. And yep, so then I, I came over here and it was like the first time I felt comfortable with myself because wow. I was... I was meeting other students who were also, there was a lot of half Japanese people, a lot of Kikokushijo who had been living in, mm -hmm. you know, the U.S. and come back. And I felt like I was with my people is what I felt oh, like. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, uh, and also I was in a city, I was living in Tokyo. So it just, I felt um, really excited by the lifestyle and everything over here. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Were you scared of coming? Because you came here. I mean, not here. Came to Japan. Japan yeah. <laughs> came to Japan by yourself. So were you like worried, nervous, or you were just like, I'm all in? You know, sometimes being young, that helps because you don't so much build on like lots of fears, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, I think that's the, the exact thing. Well, two things. One is I had already had the experience of going to boarding school and living away from home, oh, okay. so I was okay with that. But I was I was too excited to be scared about it. <laughs> everything was an adventure. There was really, like, nothing. I just didn't really think anything could be mm -hmm. wrong. I didn't feel anything I could fear. <laughs> gotcha. I mean, that's true. Like, no, like, it was, like, not to myself because – not really not to myself, but for my daughter because my I have, you know, two girls and – but if they want to go to Japan, I'm like, Jochi, apply Jochi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, uh, isn't Jochi University is uh, one of like uh, the quote unquote, like a good university, like from the society. I think, you know, that's one of the high prestige university, correct? Yes, it is. Um, well, when I first came, I didn't really know that much about it but every time I tell somebody I'm from I went to Jochi they're like yeah wow. so you know so I'm just yeah well, yeah I guess it's a good school here I am you know yeah. <laughs> I see well thank you so much so wow it's so I, I would love to uh hear more about your life in Japan and all that but I actually gonna go ahead and switch gear because you are an expert um, on the area of health and the beauty and you know you mentioned kind of like a microbi uh, microbiotic food which I never heard of until I listened to one of your um, interview with I think it was her name Mayumi the she's yes. a chef 
for Madonna. So I was like, wow. And then you uh, also you teach uh, other women about the food energetics. Is that what it was? So um, can you tell us like a little bit about like what what that is, uh, food energetics, and then what are the differences that you have noticed in um, in regards to like the Japanese and the Western mentality of like health and beauty? I know earlier you mentioned you know when you came to Japan or why am I saying the came because I'm in the US. <laughs> So yeah. weird. When I went to Japan, uh, when you went to Japan, you know, you saw everybody's like so thin, and you know. But then um, I, I, I know here in the US, I, I feel like so. This is just a little bit of my personal story, but so when I came to US, everybody was telling me how how small I am. But then in Japan, I'm not that small, right. and I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about because yes, the size is the <laughs> size is small. So I kind of want to. You know, if you can share about like uh, things that you have noticed, you know, while you're living in Japan, like in terms of the the ideas of the health and the beauty or the mentality of um, health and beauty, that would be great. Okay. Oh my goodness, how much time do you have? <laughs> There's so many things to answer. Yeah. So, um, first of all, to give people an idea of food energetics and macrobiotics. It's about understanding how food affects your body based on how it grows in nature. So we talk a lot about yin and yang. So in Japan, you know, they say yinsei and yosei namono. So, you know, we kind of understand about balance based on how food affects us, like things like temperature, if we feel uplifted or if we feel relaxed. Um, these are really the properties that people talk about. We also talk about seasons. So, you know, sits no mono tabetari, karada hyasanai yoni, you know, don't yeah. make your body cold. And these are some concepts that I thought were really unusual because in the US, everything is science based. So everybody True. says, oh, if you want to lose weight, then, you know, eat less, exercise more. It's all about calories in, calories out, or eat more protein, low carbs. Carbs are going to make you fat. You're going to have more sugar. You know, like, there's just so many things that are based around uh, nutrient content, nutrient density. But in Japan or in this Eastern way of looking at food, we actually look at nature first. We say, okay, what is available to us for us to eat? Because if we're eating seasonal foods, that means that we're helping our body acclimate to our climate. So that means that our body doesn't have to take on extra stress of eating foods that are out of season. So that's something very simple. Um, also something with... Um, uh, body care, like keeping your body warm, I thought that was unusual too. I, I didn't think that body temperature had anything to do with, with weight loss. Mm -hmm. So in Japan, you're always hearing people say, make sure you keep your body warm, keep your body warm, you know, don't have drinks that have ice in it, or, you know, make sure you're putting some ginger in something to kind mm -hmm. of help stimulate your body, or even just taking hot baths uh, to help with your circulation. So they say, hanshi yoku, so you're mm -hmm. wearing, you know, have your, um, the uh, bath water up until just below your, your chest area. And I was just really fascinated that there is something outside of diet, nutrient, and science that could help me lose weight. It just became so much more intuitive. Like, everything was about common sense. You know, like, of course I want to keep my body warm. It feels better if I keep my body warm. Or, of course I want to eat seasonal foods because they taste the best. Not just because they could help your body the best, but they're just, they're, the most enjoyable at that time period. So um, it, for the Japanese teishoku, what is really great about it is you have a little bit of everything. So you're having a little bit of animal products, a little bit of seasonal vegetables. You're having uh, miso soup and pickles, which are really great for your digestive system. You have some rice, which is very moist. So, you know, in, in Western countries, we eat bread, which is very dry. So it, um, a lot of people talk about hydration. You want to stay hydrated, but mm -hmm. if you if you're eating foods that are dry, that's not really going to help you with hydration. But in Japan, you're naturally eating a lot of foods that have a lot of um, high water content. So there's just so many. Um, I feel like my perception about food and how I was supposed to take care of myself really changed. And one thing I was really surprised to find out is that not a lot of Japanese people even seem to really know about it because oh, I, you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like just you're, learning. <laughs> Right. So when you're you're growing up and you eat the Japanese teishoku, you just think that that's normal. That's part of the culture. But there's actually a science or a you know a study behind why those foods go together the way they do. And you don't have to eat Japanese food for it to happen. You can still create a teishoku with Western food, too. So it's not really necessarily about eating miso. Right. It's not about having you know otsukemono. It's it's about uh, using those concepts and applying whatever culture you're in to those concepts of how you set up your plate. 
Gotcha. Wow. Yeah, I learned a lot just by listening and it just makes sense and it's funny how you have mentioned something about, you know, keep your body warm and I remember like my, my mom would like always tell me like just make sure you always, you know, cover your blanket, like don't sleep with your belly like, you know, showing because it, you know, you right. can have a stomach ache later or like things like that and and right. even uh, later on after, I don't remember when, but you know, when she came and I'm like, and I was still younger, so I would wear clothes that is a little bit shorter on top, so I could still show right. my belly back then. And I'm not, not right now. <laughs> um, and then she's like, you know, like it's not good because if you you um, your stomach is too cold, and that's where you're gonna uh, gain your fat. So like, don't do that, and you know, all kinds of things. And now it's just kind of like makes sense why. So those right. are really, really great. So thank you so much. And you know, I'd love to learn more, but you know, obviously we don't have a lot of time. So um, definitely, yeah, those people who want to learn more, you know, um, you can definitely follow Catherine. So uh, the next one that I want to know is it's a very selfish, selfish question. So. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> so uh, I heard you know you speak on like how to stay away from eating sweets, right? And then um, I just I love sweets, and that's one of my yeah. weaknesses. Um, especially after I have dinner, like I have to, not necessary dinner, like any meals, I have to have sugar, like something yeah. sugar. And um, so what what can I do? To, how can I control my sugar craving? Okay, actually I. I love sweets too. I love desserts. Uh -huh. And I feel like a lot of people think, you know, sugar is bad. You usually hear like the first thing that you want to do when you're losing weight is, oh, cut out the sugar, cut out your dessert. that's what I hear. Yeah, that's what I US. usually hear. <laughs> but um, I actually, I don't really feel like that's the best uh, method um, because there's a few things. One is we have different reasons for craving sugar. So, Cutting out the sugar, the thing you're craving, is not really solving why you're why you're craving it. It's just making you feel deprived, and then like you have no willpower over not having any sugar. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing that you might notice. So there's a few reasons why we have sugar cravings. One is just that maybe you just ate a lot of salty foods. Mm -hmm. So you know you want to have. It's kind of like wanting to have a, a palate cleanser. So for example, at dinner, a lot of people have usually salty foods, like salty animal products or you know something that's more savory. And then afterwards, you kind of want to have palate cleanser just to, you know, help you, you know, just to, to feel like you're balancing out that meal. Yeah. So one way that you can um, help yourself not, you know, delve into ice cream or something like that, which might be a little too extreme for sugar, is you can start incorporating a lot of sweet vegetables into your dinner. Oh. So for example, when you're having, you know, your normal dinner meal, maybe you add things like pumpkin, you know, kabocha, or, yeah. you know, uh, satsumaimo, sweet potato, um, you can have uh, what they call a sweet vegetable soup, which is a soup that's made with cabbage, carrot, and onions. So those uh, vegetables are very calming to the body. They make us feel very relaxed, and they add a natural sweetness to our meals. So you're basically reducing the chances of you craving an extreme sugar, like an extreme sugary dessert, by allowing yourself to add some natural sweet vegetables in with your meals. So that's something that... Uh, I feel is very much easier for people to kind of wean right. themselves off. Yeah. Um, another thing I recommend is to still have the sweets that you like, but have have them made with an alternative ingredients. So you're based in California, so I'm sure there's plenty of places that have oh my gosh, you know yeah, desserts totally. like vegan desserts and mm -hmm. raw food desserts. But the thing is, even in America, I feel like they really sweeten things way too much. Like you know how in Japan, most desserts you have are very subtle. Yeah. Like, it's a nice sweetness, but in America, it's, like, really, really way too, too strong. So, mm -hmm. Right. So if you wanted to at home, um, you know, you could look up some Japanese macrobiotic restaurant – or, uh, excuse me, not restaurants, um, recipes online. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they use certain types of um, – sugars like maple syrup or things that are not uh, as stressful on the body as, okay. yeah, they're not as stressful. So you're mm -hmm. basically allowing yourself to enjoy your sweets, but you're just not having something that's too much on your body. That totally makes sense. Yeah, I, I am nowadays, I, I hear so many things, I mean, especially people are talking about, um, what is it, the gluten food, like the gluten free, yeah, gluten -free. yeah all kinds, so I feel like so many people are, especially, I guess, it's an, I don't know if it's a California thing, but, um, you know, people eat like kale chips, and then uh, yeah. anything with sugar, they uh, replace with like date, is it dates, the red ones? Yeah, dates. 
That's yeah, it. or like beans, and it's just like it, it actually it intimate like very intimidating to me because I'm not really good at cooking, and um, and then you know things that I've never heard of. Um, so it's just like oh my gosh, it's too much, and I don't know if I can do it. Right. So. This totally makes sense. So substitute with something. Uh, I love the way how you said uh, it, it's not stress. What is it? So str- it's not stressful for your body. Stressful like, for your oh, body. Sorry. Yeah. So if you're yeah. having if you have refined white sugar or if you're eating processed food, then that's it, it reacts in your body very quickly and not in a very positive way. But if you're mm-hmm. having something like uh, sweeteners like maple syrup or these dates that you're talking about, these actually have some nutrient content. So mm-hmm. you're kind of naturally helping yourself with sweets. Uh, one thing I don't really like that I hear people suggest is, oh, if you're craving dessert, just have a piece of fruit. That never mm-hmm. worked for me. It's like the texture is different. The flavor is different. So, you know, you still want to have something that has that same texture, that same experience, but just make sure that you're using ingredients that are easier on your body. Oh, I love it. It's, it's more reasonable for me yeah, <laughs> rather than those exactly. people who just don't eat any sweets so or cut off all the right. sugar. I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. So, yeah, right. and then speaking of that, um, so having two kids, um, I often find myself at the party, not the adult party, it's the kids' birthday parties, right. <laughs> and where they have, like, tons of pizzas and, of course, cupcakes and all that stuff, right? right. And, um, of course, you know, the best way for me to do is to just avoid all those um, bad food. Um, but I'm just curious to see, like, how, what is the best way to kind of start having a good eating habit? Well, in those situations, the thing is, life is always going to happen. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're always... I feel like whenever people are trying to be healthy, they only create a plan assuming that everything goes perfectly all the time. We forget to think of like, what do we do when we are socializing or what do we do? Because it's always going to happen. There's going to be something that comes up where you're not going to be able to to do things according to plan. Um, And in those moments, uh, this is actually based on macrobiotic concept is that Mm -hmm. you just want to enjoy yourself. So, Mm -hmm. you know, be in the moment. If you if you're craving the pizza but you don't think it's good for you, maybe just have you know have a slice of pizza, enjoy it. Really, just you know, just be in the moment when you're having your pizza and enjoy it. Um, the thing is, if pizza if it doesn't make you feel good, like if you know if you're lactose intolerant and mm-hmm. you're eating pizza, then obviously you probably shouldn't be having it at all. Right. But I think one problem is that people aren't a hundred percent sure if it's bad or not. You know, sometimes you eat. Eat, you eat dairy and you feel fine and sometimes you eat mm-hmm. it and you feel really horrible mm-hmm. so you know one thing that people can do is get an intolerance test taken okay so sense. if you're a hundred percent sure that pizza is not good for you then you know you can you can proactively have confidence to not eat it otherwise I would just enjoy yourself when you're there and you can try to focus on what you would do before and after those parties so maybe for breakfast you have a green smoothie uh-huh. to get those vegetables in and then at Ooh, night maybe okay. you have Balancing some out. you know miso soup or yeah something to help your body digest what you had just had at that party okay yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so helpful. Like, I feel like I'm benefit the most out of like all the other <laughs> listeners because I get to choose what kind of question that I want to ask. But I am pretty sure um, there are a lot of um, people who would be in the same situation too. And not necessarily yes, for kids' totally. party, but any parties, right? Like when you go, yes. I don't know, if you're younger, maybe you go clubbing and afterwards you go to McDonald's. I don't know. Like, you know, anything could happen. Right. So, okay, right. great. So, um, so switching your gears to, um, yes. you know, I have learned a lot about the, the food and the dieting. So I also want to um, focus on like the beauty side. And yes. um, I myself still have a um, very self-esteem with my body, especially yes. um, having, yes. you know, kids. And right. it's just different. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily look for the same one. So I'm just curious to see, like, what would you recommend for those who might be experiencing the same way as I am? Uh, what can we do to feel more confident? I know this is something that you talk about yeah. it and then you teach. So uh, what, how can we feel more confident and comfortable the way who we are? Okay, so, well, first of all, I wish that I had the experience of having kids so I could say something relatable, but unfortunately <laughs> I, I don't have But there's one thing that I do notice about women who have kids is I feel like they just, they stop. They stop. It's not that they stop taking care of themselves, but they just kind of assume that they can never have the body that they want because they had kids. So it's like you, you're like, oh, those days are, are of having a flat stomach are over. You know, it's never going to happen again. You know, what do I do? I'm just going to have to learn how to cope. And I think it's more 
there's more struggle with trying to accept something that you don't like. Mm. It's, it's, that's hard. Like, uh, I remember when I was overweight, I was like, you know what, maybe I just have to accept the fact that this is how I am and I'm going to have to like work at it. And that's just what it is. But I think that if you're not happy with it, the thing is there are so many women out there who have had kids who look amazing, like look even better than they did before they had children. Right. And there's some, there's one application I saw that our, our Instagram feed that I saw that I really recommend. Um, it's Kayla. It seems, I don't know if you've heard of her before, but she is a, she's a, a fitness um, expert. She created an application. So an, an app that you can use where you only do a workout for like 28 minutes mm -hmm. a day for three days a week. It's super simple. You can yeah. do it at home. And most of the people on her Instagram are mothers who had just okay. had kids and now they have this like really amazing stomach. So I think one thing you could do is, you know, you, if you're, you feel like you want to change, then look for that outside inspiration, gather those gotcha. people who are already doing it and, you know, and realize that you don't have to have like the motherhood keep you back from mm -hmm. whatever type of body you want. It's still totally possible. Gotcha. So you're going to have to send me her uh, application because okay. I, I'm like dying to. And yeah. I do uh, exercise. Um, I used to exercise like, you know, like literally five days a week. But then now I do at least three times yeah. a week. So that way, you know, not necessarily to just like trying to lose your weight or anything, but it's just to maintain, you know, the healthy body and all that. So I'll definitely look into her uh, application. So thank you so much for sharing. And um, so... Speaking of like, you know, kind of taking care of my exercise, doing the exercise is part of, you know, the self-care. So self-care and self-love are pretty, for me, it's a very new concept. And I don't know about, I don't know about this like society itself. I don't know if it's like a new, right. but how much uh, this concept is accepted and being practiced for um, like the, uh, for Japanese um, side or right. like Eastern, well, Eastern <laughs> or, you know. I think that um, self-love and self-care are things that people in the U.S. are actively trying to figure out. Like, okay. what is this whole concept of self-care and self-love? But in Japan, I think that women have a very strong understanding of self-care when it comes to food and and beauty. You know, we're doing things like lymph massage, limpa massage, you know, like how they, oh, you know, yes. wash their face, uh -huh. you know, how they take care of their skin, you know, they have their three-part systems. Uh, the food quality here is really, really good. So I feel like when it comes to body care, when it comes to um, taking care of yourself, I think Japan, the women in Japan really know what they're doing. But when it comes to self-love, that's a whole other story. Right. Uh -huh. I think um, I see a lot in society, you know, when you get into the workforce, there's such a big, strong senpai kohai relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think especially, I mean, women in general are like this, but we're, we're trying to get approval from other people and, you know, try to, to work really hard and we overcompensate what our, what our bodies can do or how we feel because we're trying to work at something or we're trying right. to be liked by other, other people. So the concept of self love is about making sure that any activity you participate in is something that is not going to drain your energy or mm -hmm. make you feel less of yourself. So, you know, um, for example, getting involved with a job where you feel empowered as opposed to getting in a job where you feel like you're just trying to please your, your right. senpai or something like that. So I would say in Japan, um, you know, most people seem to grow up with this idea of group, group society, doing mm -hmm. things for other people, uh, yeah. making sure you, yeah, you're aware of other people and, uh, trying to transition into, taking um, action just for yourself, I think is, is difficult for a lot of Japanese women just because of culture. Mm -hmm. mm, I like that. Especially um, last week, I had a, an opportunity to, opportunity to interview Helen, which you know her as well. Yeah. And she also shared her um, this moment called Motainai moment. And she, yeah. she did share that, you know, the time that she was just so exhausted and, you know, she wasn't really... Um, not necessarily like saying no to the people and she was trying to, you know, please others and try to meet others' expectations. So that yeah. totally makes sense. And I, I feel like I, I myself like learn how to be more responsible for myself, 
Because, right. you know, before when I was in Japan, I'm always about meeting someone else's ex expectations. Yeah, and now, else, right. Yeah, it's now it's all about, not not in a selfish way, but, you know, I yeah. need to, it's it's my choice and it's my responsibility to do what I need to do. That could be just saying no to the project that right. I was asked. So, exactly. I love that. I also think, uh, I think even women who move abroad, mm -hmm. I mean, even, even with my mother, I would see this too. I think it's still really hard for Japanese mm -hmm. women because you go from a society where you have to overcompensate and even if you don't feel like you're doing that much and you're in the US you still feel like maybe people take advantage of you because they just right. don't understand the culture that you came from so you know you do something that you think is nice and you're expecting someone to do something back because that's the culture you came from and it doesn't happen so it's just you know I, I think that transition too is, is kind of challenging <laughs> yeah well, thank you so much that totally makes sense so um, in, in my, during my podcast, I asked this question, um, for all the guests. So I'd love to ask. So I believe that everyone has a gift of talent that no one can copy yeah. and we're here to let our talent shine. So what is yours and how are you using your gift of talent? Okay. Well, um, I think one of my talents is being able to understand something that's really complex mm -hmm. and break it down into simple pieces mm -hmm. for people. Uh -huh. And I think my gift is being able to use that to help people realize that they can they can have a comfortable body. They can be very, you know, they can have a balanced body and feel comfortable with themselves. That's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. And um, can you and then also my podcast is all about being confident. So yes. can you tell us your own definition of your self-confidence and how are you building yours? Confidence. I think confidence is about, it's about overcoming fears. Mm. So either, either the absence of fear, like you've decided that, you know, you've come to a conclusion that the fear is not there or making a decision that you're going to do something in your favor regardless of whether the fear is there. So um, for me, I would say that what I've been working on is just with my personal business. So I feel like other parts of my life I feel very confident about. And now just getting my message out is something that I'm working on too. Right. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I, I really love your community too. You know, there are a bunch of women who are helping each other and that engagement. And I love how you're asking questions and every day and motivating to stay healthy and all that. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty sure you're going to yeah. share more about, you know, how we can connect. But so what are you uh, excited um, about your business? And can you tell us like how we can connect to you? And if there's like anything that you can offer for our listeners, that would be great. Of course. I think the thing that I'm most excited about for my business is seeing people mm. change because I, in my program that I, that I teach, I don't give meal plans. I don't say eat this, eat that. I just tell people different concepts or a different way of looking at food. And there's been women who have lost anywhere from 15 to 40 pounds just by changing how they think about food. And I think that that is really, really powerful to not give them a meal plan and they can still make very positive changes. Um, so if people do want to give something a look, I do have a free seven day email course um, where I give really, really ridiculously easy tasks that you can do. And it's mainly geared towards career women or yo-yo dieters. So people who feel like they know a lot of information, but they're just overwhelmed and they're looking for something that's simpler that they can do. And these are tasks that all glamorous women that come across, even based over here in Tokyo, uh, do on a daily basis. Mm, so they can they can come to my website, which is girlonbliss.com, and opt in for yeah, that there. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for all this amazing information. I feel like I know more, and there are so many things that I can just implement like right now. It's not something like, oh my gosh, I have to go to the grocery store, and you know, like all those right. diet, <laughs> like, and then they give us a meal plan, and like, I have never seen this veg. Is that a vegetable? Is that a fruit? Like, what is this? And like all the ing right. ingredients. Like, yeah. we don't have these. Oh, no wonder why we're like not really healthy. You know, yeah. it's, it's not like that. You're like more right. very practical, practical, and then like I can jump in like right now. So this is all great. So thank you so much for joining with us. I really appreciate it. So all the uh, information that she, uh, Kathleen, had mentioned, I'll make sure to post on my uh, show note. Well, wow. so thank you. Okay. Is there anything final words? Oh uh, no, I think we really covered a lot. <laughs> yeah, today. within this short time of period. So, yeah, so thank you so much yeah. and have a wonderful day. Okay, thank Bye. you so much, Aniko. Bye. There you have it. 
I have learned a lot from Catherine, and I'm pretty sure you did too. I hope you really understand the importance of self care and having a better understanding of the concept of self love. I really love what Catherine said about self love, and it's just not about, you know, oh, I love myself so much, I'm just gonna buy this and buy that, I'm gonna take some selfies. Obviously, that's not self love. <laughs> I love how Catherine explained about self love. And she said, any activities that you're engaging, make sure that these activities are not negatively affecting or draining your energy. I didn't realize that is part of self love because I know many of the women that I talk to, they're in a working environment where it is very toxic that many people are taking advantage of you or. People are not really respecting you, or you're not really getting the rewarding career. Although you, you know you can do more, but then someone else or your boss is not really trusting or not really giving a job, and they're, you're being a doormat, or you're letting others to control you or take advantage of you. And that is so important. A, you have to realize that you're in that working environment. And B, it is your responsibility also to either reach out to somebody who you can trust, or maybe you have to you have to make some changes, right? You cannot, you can't wait a chance. Like, chance is not going to come for you to make a better situation. You make changes so that you can have a better life, the better work life. So, I hope this, you find this episode to be also inspiring as well. Before I let you go, I have some special announcements for you from Catherine. I have included all the links that she mentioned from this episode. She now has her own podcast. It is called Girl on Bliss Podcast. And she also mentioned about her seven days email course, which I have taken one as well. And I, by the way, I can't believe that she's giving that, all that away all for free. So definitely check that out. And she is also launching her membership site. And that is coming up on September 1st. So if you're interested in about it, I have posted the website link. So, I highly recommend you to check it out. All right. Lastly, I have one more quick announcement. Business consultant, success consultant, no Tajima Yoko Sanga, Silicon Valley to Los Angeles, the Hachigat to Kugatsni, Silicon Valley style, Kokiaksu, Huyas Tame no three steps, O Kaisai Saremas. Yoko Sanwa, Korema de Juni Nenka Niwatari, Los Angeles, O Kyoten Ni, Katsu Sarete Kimashita. 1000人以上を超える経営者や起業家の方々に対しビジネスの成功プライベートの充実どちらも手に入れるためのサポートを提供していらっしゃいます今回のセミナーは特に価値観ある素晴らしいサービスがなぜ飛ぶように売れないのか不思議に思うことがあるセールスをしているご自身に対し嫌悪感を抱くことがある仕事や顧客習得を急ぐあまり商品を安売りしてしまうことがあるという方へおすすめです起業家の聖地ビジネスの本場シリコンバレースタイルのビジネスセミナーを日本語で体験できるチャンスですきっと楽しんでいただけるはずですぜひこの機会にご参加ください詳細は www.yokotajima.com または私のウェブサイトのページをご覧ください That is all for today, and thank you so much for listening, guys. And I will see you for next week. Bye! Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Make sure to subscribe to Her Confidence Her Way podcast and leave a review, which will help this podcast to be more visible so that other women can find this podcast easily. For a free monthly newsletter, free private Her Confidence Her Way community. And learn how you can get free weekly l e s s o n to help you build your self confidence, go to www.theinnystyle.com. Ladies, 
You don't need a permission from someone else to believe yourself. Just be you, because you are amazing. Let's support each other and keep on building your confidence. <laughs>